What's good, y'all? It's your boy Jacques. Shout outs to the real ones. Follow, like, and subscribe. You know the vibes. Here's another full-time content creator update, and this one is a doozy. Remember last month when I said that I was working with Herschel on putting yourself out there, basically highlighting food creators, people that trust themselves to go out and work for themselves. They wanted to highlight creators of all shapes. So not just like the cliche creators like me as a making Instagram content or YouTube content, but instead they wanted to talk with food creators, people that work in nails, people that work in hair, people that make, that create things that aren't necessarily what we would deem as creation today. And I basically worked with three food entrepreneurs, shout out to Jesse, Kia, and Sage. And I was able to kind of curate this amazing event, which sold out and it was just a whole blast. It was so much fun. And I, I was so proud of it. I put to, I produced the whole event, I hosted it, triple double no assist, it was fire. And while I was producing this event, I thought to myself, what are they doing for Black History Month? Because it was right around the corner and I knew that there was a way that we could turn this idea of putting yourself out there about highlighting creators in a way that would benefit black creators. I, I approached them with an idea. I was like, hey, let's do a studio visit with a creator. And they were like, what kind of a creator would you be into shooting? And I wanted to shoot a nail tech. I've been obsessed with Pinterest for the last couple weeks and last couple months, ever since I really actively started to seriously start putting together mood boards for my photo shoots. And, and I came across a couple pictures of a nail tech working on black women's nails. And I was like, this is definitely what I wanna shoot. I had met a nail tech at the YMCA that I go to. Her name is Michelle. She's been working in nails for about 12 years. She's a blast. She's so much fun. Like, you should definitely check out her Instagram. And I was going to get a gift card for someone else but after going to Herschel with this idea and they asked me who do I want to take a what I want to shoot I was able to be like oh I have somebody in the bag and I was basically able to go back to Michelle and be like hey I got money for you and there's no better feeling when you're a creator to be able to go to another creator and be like hey I got some money for you and the idea was to do a studio visit. Uh, Michelle has a salon, which is across the street from the Y. It's very private. It's very, you would never expect it to be an actual salon. It looks really cool. And the idea was to kind of shoot her in the space so we could see what it's like to get your nails done by her. And I was gonna uh, have her design um, something that was like a nails that were like Black History Month inspired. As a hand model, I work with Black Power Barbie. Amika and I work on so many different creative projects together. Together, so it's really great and it was great to kind of have her there as for the my first um branded shoot this is crazy this is my first branded shoot so it was pretty great um Herschel was down they pretty much let me have any type of creative control that I wanted they basically gave no notes on what to expect they sent over like here's what our pictures kind of look like but they just kind of were accepting of whatever I was going to give them and the one interesting wrinkle that I made sure they accepted was that we needed to have an in-store activation because the way I felt like if there wasn't an in-store activation if we couldn't see the photos that I took at the photo shoot in store if it was just a digital only thing it's like if you post something on an Instagram and the algorithm doesn't show it to anybody, does it actually happen? But instead, I'm getting the actual tangible foot traffic of people walking through the images, walking them and seeing them, being able to hopefully not touch them, but like being able to put hands on them. So that's where they have some real world significance. And also, so that's why Michelle and me and other people that were like, into the photo shoot can actually go and see them. Later on in the video, you'll see how that came out. So the shoot day was a good day. Uh, I was expecting it to be sunny so, so we can get some sun in there, but there was no sun. It was super cloudy. I had gone to Michelle's salon a week before just so I could get some test shots. So I knew what to expect when like actually shooting the, the, the nails themselves. Because since I'm like a, a exclusively film photographer, I have to get used to like measuring 60 times and cutting once. People are always surprised that I take so few pictures and I'm able to get the exposures I get, but it's only because like when you shoot with film, A, it's expensive, and B, like I just kind of plan everything out so I kind of know what I'm getting at any given time. You know, that's just part of the game. So 
the shoot was good. I had a budget, so I was able to get an assistant, which actually made me feel really good. I tapped my guy, Tyler. He's the one that's actually recording a lot of this B-roll that you're seeing here. And the way I am, I'm a very much like a documentary photographer. I like to buzz around and like almost like a, I'm like a fly with the camera. So I wasn't really staging too many shots. We had a couple stage shots just for the portrait because I wanted to make sure we got some portraits of her, some that she could have herself and also something that could be displayed in store. And I had an idea for a signature shot, which I'll tease to y'all in a second. I'll explain to y'all in a second. But essentially, the day was great. She came up with the design. One of the designs was going to have like some gold uh, jewelry. It's not really jewelry, but some gold uh, stuff on one hand. And another one was like a really Black History Month, cool, colorful design on the other hand. And Amika was down with it. So we were just kind of like, I just kind of like let them go. And I would just take pictures around them as they were going. They were talking. The vibes were good. We were listening to a shot game, Mr. Money with the vibe. She had a nice I'm a piano playlist. And I've been obsessed with I'm a piano lately drop a comment in the comments if you're obsessed with it as much as i am and the pictures came out amazing amazing like they came out so good i've been doing something where i'll take it on digital this camera right here and then i'll use that as a way to kind of dial in my settings on my film camera because the one good thing about shooting digital is you can see it of course so i'm able to kind of plan the shot out of my digital camera and then it'll line up with the shots in film because the film is just looks so much better the colors are so nice it's so rich there's so much more you could do with it i love it so much so i pretty much put that in there and we like just shot for about like two or three hours um, and we were able to get the final shot. The final shot I wanted to get was uh, Michelle surrounded by all of her nail designs, but in like a nice tight headshot. So it almost looked like a star because she's a star. She was the star of the actual shoot. And we had Natalie, her assistant. I had Amika toss her hands in there and also Michelle toss her hands in there. And I kind of cut a nice little close crop so you wouldn't necessarily see it. The idea was to kind of highlight Michelle and then the nails that she designed all around her. And that shot came out really good. So I get the exposures back. I'm looking through the pictures, they're, they're banging. I did some light touching, some, so I did some light retouching on them, mostly editing for the color, you know, kind of like editing out a couple things nothing crazy out of about 75 pictures taken that day i'll say about 45 of them came out killer came out really really good and that's a really good success rate i'm getting better at whittling down my pictures and sharing less of my pictures because i know some of the best photographers are only sharing one or two photos and i know that these photo shoots probably have hundreds of pictures so i'm trying to get better at editing myself which is hard but you know you always want to just show everything to everybody but it's all good and i was able to get ready to go and actually see it in store shout out to dylan dylan freed he was the guy over at the Herschel store that was kind of working with the activation itself and initially he was going to show me on ig he was going to show me on facetime and i told him like no i want to be able to kind of get it authentically i want to go there and watch it like just like the consumer would watch it themselves i want to see what the consumer sees when they walk inside and they can kind of feel activated by the activation that i shot and it was giving it was right in front of the cash wrap, so it has prime real estate. Everybody could see it. I had it had like a little uh, explanation of an interview that I did with Michelle right next to it, and like the picture of the headshot just came out so so good. And just the high res scan and the film, like literally, it looks exactly like the scan does. It looks the picture just came out so good. And then you walk into the uh, walk to the back of the store, and there's another activation. There's two pictures, and one of them is just Michelle, the, the headshot that I really worked hard on and the other one is actually her in the actual action making it happen and that was like really gratifying there's sometimes as a creator that you think that what you're doing is wrong because so much of what you make you don't make any money off of when you work a full-time job you are constantly getting paid this stability and that so at the end of the day like you know that you're kind of on the right path but when you're a creator and you have to essentially kill what you eat you essentially eat what you kill you know you really never know what when the next job is coming and two you never know if your creation is good enough to justify what you're charging for it or what you hope to get paid for it and i think this was one instance where i realized like oh 
no, I did that thing. I really, really did that. And I kind of demonstrated that I can shoot these types of projects. I've been doing a lot of model fashion shoots lately, a lot of test shoots, trying to you know, showcase to people that, hey, look, you want to tap me to do these shoots because I can do them. And it's been hard to kind of break into that industry because it can be a little gatekeepery at times. But I feel like, especially with this Herschel shoot and some of the shoots that I did in Paris, it just shows me that, you know what, I'm heading down the right path. Now, who would have thought a year ago that I would be a photographer? A year ago, I had just had my first show shooting Polaroid. So I would have never thought that being a photographer was the next likely step. But the fact that I've been able to kind of do this, I don't, and I'm also staying within my style. I don't shoot in studio. I could, I'm could, i gonna start learning how to shoot in studio, learning how to manipulate lights, because if you wanna work with some of the bigger talent, you have to shoot in studio. But my style is documentary editorial. I like shooting in the street. I like walking around. I like New York City to be as much of a subject as the person I'm shooting, as much as the clothes that I'm shooting. And one, because it's like the ease of access. Because I liked shooting something that it's like, yeah, anybody else could have went into the street and shot this too, but I did it. And this is the eye that I had. Anybody else could have gone into Michelle's salon and taken these pictures, but this is what I did and this is how I did it. It wasn't like I manipulated lights in a studio or, you know, had so much control. It's like, I like the fact that I have to relinquish control in order to to take control of what I can actually control. I can't control the fact that it wasn't sunny. I can't control the fact that um, that the shop wasn't, uh, that the shop was split. There's there's a whole other salon behind it. But I can control like how I'm positioning my shots and I can control how I'm guiding Michelle. Another thing that I realized that I learned is that when I'm on set, even every time I would get lost, every time I felt like I wasn't doing the right thing or I didn't know what shoot was going to come up next or people were asking me, Tyler, Amika, Michelle was asking me for direction. I found that if I just kind of sat in that listlessness, the answer would come to my head. I felt like I was never lost for an answer. I was never, I felt, I felt like I felt fully in command of what I was there to do. And you have no idea how good of a feeling that was. That was like such a gratifying feeling and I'm just so happy that it all came together really good. So what's next? I don't know what's next. I have some test shoots with some people that I wanna make sure I get set up and I'm working on getting those set up. But honestly, I really feel like what's next is just me continuing to pitch brands, ideas for shoots, continuing to pitch uh, models for shoots, continuing to reach out to uh, modeling agencies to kind of get some test shoots. and. At the moment, photography doesn't need to be my primary source of income. I have other clients that essentially supply that. But eventually, it would be nice if photography became about 20 or 30% of it. That's why I could still be selective while having to take everything that comes my way. You know, I want to be able to be picky and choosy. I don't want to have to shoot people that I don't want to have to shoot. And maybe I'm coming at it from a bougie perspective at this point. Let me know what y'all think. But hey. Anyways, that's it for me. If y'all have watched this long, I really, really, really appreciate it. You can watch the next videos that are coming up on your screen right now. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, and also let me know what you want to hear from me. What else do you want to hear from these videos? What else do you want to see? Because hey, you know, being a full-time content creator is really difficult, but if I can give you some help on how you could do it yourself, that's all the more amazing. Anyways, that's it for me. I'll see y'all on the other side of this, all right? Peace.